So the reason I am doing a tour of my reference analog system is because my reference analog system doesn't change much. Speakers, sure, amplifiers, preamplifiers, stacks, these are things that I review on my channel often. So they come and go and they switch out. I have a few speaker references, specific amplifier references that I will talk about in a different video. But today I wanted to discuss the reference analog system I have going on because it's something that doesn't change for a very long time. In fact, every year I try to come up with a analog reference system, change it, upgrade it, and a lot of thought process goes into which component I will be having for a year or longer. So of course, for my analog system, it all starts with this turntable right here. This is the Pure Fidelity Harmony turntable, and I fell in love with this turntable when I first looked at it at the Toronto Audio Fest back in 2021, 2022. It's a gorgeous looking turntable. They sell other finishes as well, but the one I have here is the quilted maple finish. And as you can see, it is beautifully crafted. It's beautiful. Um, hybrid design, interestingly. So in the turntable world, there's different designs. There's mass loaded ones, uh, meaning very heavy turntables. And then there's ones that are rather light and they all have their own sound signature based on those mass differences in the weight. So this one is a hybrid design, meaning that the top portion here that you see the beautiful wood finish that is MDF and of course veneer wood. And then you have the bottom portion here, which is made out of a machined aluminum, airspace grade aluminum. So the bottom portion is quite heavy, so hence it's a hybrid design. And I really like this turntable because it strikes a nice balance between that, you know, heavy turntable, mass loaded turntables versus lighter ones. And talking about striking a balance in terms of the sound signature, really what I was looking for was something that strike the fine balance of something that I call a vintage turntable sound because my background is in vintage turntables. I used to own a lot of vintage turntables uh, and they have a distinctive sound, Thorin's turntables, Lin turntables, and so on with the specific matte thickness that you need for the Lin turntables. And I can go on and on, uh, but I'll save you the trouble. I like vintage turntables, but I also appreciate the a little bit more analytical nature of modern day turntables. Now, it's not totally my taste because is too analytical, some of the modern turntables, but I wanted something that was a nice balance between the two and this turntable really provides that. Uh, first of all, it does have that musicality, that little uh, beautiful mid-range textures that you know vintage turntables are known for. It doesn't have that kind of bloom as some vintage turntables in the past had. Uh, it's much more controlled, much tighter and extended bass, which I like. So a little bit more technically advanced in terms of the bass control and the bass sound. Um, I find it more well-rounded, textured, nuanced, and more controlling, more impactful with a turntable like this. Now, when it comes to the mid-range, that is where I really fell in love with this turntable. It does strike a really fine balance between having that musicality and as well as that detail retrieval. Uh, being able to hear into the music more is what I find with this turntable and I really love that. Well, what I find this turntable to really sound like in, in, its, in its entirety is mostly neutral. There's not much uh, emphasis in any part of the bass, mid-range, or high frequency is mostly neutral. And again, that may be something that you may be looking for, something that you may like, or maybe not. But for me, it serves a very specific purpose. And that is because I personally review speakers, stacks, amplifiers, preamplifiers, and so on. Uh, I, the last thing I need is my analog system to sound too colored to where I can't decipher what the speakers are doing or what the preamplifiers are doing that I'm reviewing at the time. So I wanted my analog system to sound rather neutral, but it was also important to me that it didn't sound too analytical. I wanted this turntable to, like I said, be musical. And one of the factors that I found that aided greatly in the decision-making process of me falling in love with the sound quality of this turntable was really the sound stage, both the width, especially the depth, but, but the width is impressive as well. Uh, the sound stage is quite huge and coming from a streamer or a CD player, I just find the sound stage to be a little bit more spacious, a little bit more holographic with the turntable. Um, especially this turntable, I should say. And lastly, something that I didn't expect from this turntable that was a surprise to me uh, that I really appreciated was the noise floor. This turntable is an extremely quiet turntable, and I can't emphasize that enough. 
It's not something that I have expected or was a criteria for me per se. Um, I'm okay with the crackles and pops in my recordings. Some of them are just not very well record recorded. So I'm okay with that, but I just noticed how quieter those noise floor, uh, those crackles and noise floor was in general when listening to my albums on this turntable. So that was something that I was, uh, again, not expecting, but surprisingly one of the quietest turntables that I have come to appreciate. Now all of this, I want to make sure to emphasize that it is both the cartridge, the Stratos cartridge, this is a moving coil cartridge from Pure Fidelity, as well as the tone arm, it all is in combination. Uh, turntable is a very sophisticated setup. Every, anything you do can make a difference in the sound quality. The turntable mats matter, the platter matters, also the cartridge, the tone arm, uh, the cabling, all of that matters to change the synergy between the turntable and the cartridge and the tone arm and everything else to kind of bring this hom homogenous sound. And that is something a little bit difficult because again, when you go out in the market, you can pick out your own cartridge, your own tone arm, and you can buy the turntable separately. So I didn't want to do that. So it was important to me that a company like Pure Fidelity sold and everything as a package and sounded good like this, sounded like this, exactly how I want it as a package. And this, again, I don't know what it sounds like with a different cartridge or a different tone arm, but this right here in combination, just right this, the, everything here, just sounds wonderful to me and, and exactly as how I described it. So I'm very pleased with that. Now, next thing that I wanna talk about is the platter, which was one of the criteria and something that I was looking for was a Delrin platter. Now this has a rather thick platter, and of course it is Delrin. Now one of the things about Delrin platters and specifically why I was adamant about chasing after something of a similar quality or similar material used for a platter is that actually the vinyl, the records that you play on your turntable is made with the similar material as Delrin. So they share similar properties, they're very similar, so that actually helps a lot with the overall sound quality. But also Delrin is an extremely quiet, you know, kind of material. It is very um, good and proven material for a turntable platter. There's others out there like acrylic and so on, uh, many options, but I've heard many. I just prefer Delrin. I think it just sounds right. I just, just a personal preference, bias, whatever you want to call it. So I, I was specifically set on having a Delrin platter. Uh, all my previous reference turntables had Delrin platters with exception of one. So, and this certainly has one that's very thick. So I was very happy with that. Now, one thing that actually stands out to me and why I went with the Pure Fidelity turntable out of other options, which we can talk about in a different video. I had few other options, um, but the reason I went with this company is because while it is not a inexpensive turntable, um, it uses proven materials like the Delrin platter, like the isoacoustic feet, which is a feet that I use for my speakers as well as all the components that I have here. So while it doesn't use exotic parts that, you know, it's experimental, I should say, not really proven, but certain companies swear by it um, and some people swear by it. Instead of those materials, they use proven materials that has been used in turntables as proven to improve sonic um, qualities. So that's, what I was really looking for and what I appreciate about this turntable, but it doesn't mean that it has cheap parts. It has very good parts. For example, if I lift this platter and show you inside, there is actually a ruby bearing. So that is something, again, a proven uh, material for being a good bearing. And that goes same for their uh, Stratos cartridge, the tone arm, uh, the cabling, everything. Um, everything is really not really exotic materials being used, rather proven materials that's known to sound good um, and perform. So I needed my turntable to have proven materials, something not so exotic that is a bit of an experimental trial thing uh, that certain group of people swear by, but something that is widely known that is known to actually make improvements. Uh, another good kind of plus, which really wasn't a criteria, was the record clamp that it comes with. Um, I really like this heavy record clamp. It is quite hefty, and that just helps to keep my records placed down onto the turntable. Now, I own about 2,000 records. Some of them are stores. Some of them are out here for me to play. 
But really, even if I own 2,000 records, let's face it, I'm not playing all those 2,000 records all the time. There's only select few that I usually always play as my reference. And um, not all of them are the same speed, right? We have 33.3 RPM and then 45 RPM. And I didn't want a turntable where uh, some vintage turntable, some of you might remember, and even some modern ones where you have to actually lift the platter and change the positioning of the belt to change to different speeds. And I didn't want that. Um, I wanted something like maybe the old Denon turntable where uh, you can press the button and it can just you know, give me the exact speed. But this also has that function, but in a separate box, it's called the speed box or speed control box. And the unique thing about this box is that it also has this dial in the back so it can actually adjust the speed exactly down to a precision of about 0.004% or something like that. So very precise. And that allows me to make sure that I have the right speed playing uh, for the right records, which again is important, especially when it comes to timing. And that really makes a huge difference in the transient response as well as what you're hearing. So uh, I wanted the convenience, but also the precision and the turntable Pure Fidelity Harmony provides that. Now my place gets pretty dusty, as you can probably imagine. I know some of you commented that um, I don't dust my place. I dust my place quite a bit. It's just that it gets quite dusty with all the equipment and stuff stored in here. Uh, for me, you know, I'm a hoarder, right? So when it comes to uh, the turntable, I absolutely needed a dust cover because of the dust that can be accumulated. And um, you know, I, I just can't stand that on a turntable. So I wanted to make sure that I get a dust cover for this. The downside, the unfortunate fact was that this turntable didn't come with a dust cover, but I desperately needed one. Uh, thankfully, they do actually provide dust covers separately, custom made. And it's actually a pretty thick, pretty high quality dust cover that I was very satisfied with. It does have cutouts for the cabling uh, on the back as well. So I'm very happy with the dust cover. It does its job and um, so, if you contact them, you need a dust cover, then let them know and they'll be happy to provide you one. Now, lastly, I needed a turntable that I could set up on my own without professional help, something that was easy to assemble and set up on my own because again, I wanted my viewers in case they wanted to replicate what I have going on here to be able to do it with ease. And if I can do it, you can do it. I don't consider myself an expert in turntables whatsoever. Um, in fact, I consider myself a newbie. I've dabbled here and there with vintage turntables, but by, mean, by no means am I an expert. I've been around um, high-end turntables. Uh, as you guys may know, I used to work at a retail store that has really high-end turntables. So I'm familiar with the object, like the objective of what I want, but I'm not an expert in setup. There's better experts out there that can give you better advice on the setup process. Now, when I was setting this up, when it was delivered to me and I set it up, I found it to be extremely easy. If I can do it, you can do it, like I mentioned. And the only thing that I will say is that the cabling that goes from the tone arm to the uh, back here, when you feed it through, it is a little bit unintuitive. And that's just by design, you know, it's a turntable. You have to assemble everything and the assembly process is easy and everything fits into place like a puzzle, but you know, the tone arm, the cabling does have to be fed through and that portion was a little bit tricky, but otherwise, I mean, it was a breeze to set this table up. I think it took me less than 20 minutes to everything uh, to get everything going. So is this the best turntable ever that I've ever heard? No, it's not. But is it everything that I have hoped for and more? Um, absolutely, it's exactly what I needed, and exactly what I wanted. And it looks beautiful, it sounds beautiful, and again, has the materials that I want. Um, does everything I need and it sounds fabulous and I'm very happy with it. And of course, with turntables, uh, cleaning is a chore but also a uh, process in the listening you know, pleasure. And for my cartridge, actually I don't use a brush. I use something here called the Zero Dust or under other different um, brand names. But it's this like sticky material that you can wash off with water once it gets too dirty. And then all you do is just put it on the stylus and it will collect the dust for you. Um, and it's a very easy process and um, definitely worth the investment. I have two of these here just to clean my stylus. And I do clean my records or vinyl, what have you, with the uh, Record Doctor 
cleaner, which is a rather inexpensive, budget-friendly cleaner, but it is a vacuum-based cleaner and it does very well in cleaning my records. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, no complaints there. I mean, there's other ones that do a better job out there with, you know, some fancy um, jewelry cleaning devices to, you know, exotic vacuum ones. But uh, I, I've stuck with this one because it cleans well, it does the job. And if I see any, you know, residue or any kind of, you know, dust that's been collected, I just brush it off with this um, Record Doctor brush right here that comes with the record cleaner as well. And I know that there are people out there that will spend a lot of money on exotic, high quality, high end record cleaners, and that's fine. But if the goal is to get rid of crackles and pops in your recording uh, that you're playing, then I think that is really not the solution. And the first thing that you should look at is a very quiet, high end phono stage. Unfortunate truth is that a lot of people cheap out on the phono stage because they spend money on the turntable and then they just don't think about the phono stage as much, especially when they're getting into the turntable game. And I like to see turntable system as a system within a system. Um, the turntable produces a very small signal that is about 1000 times less than what your CD player would you know, output. So when you take that small signal and plug it into the next thing, which is the phono stage, which is main job, not the only job, but the main job is to amplify the signal coming from your turntable. You want that phono stage to be really good because, or at least be as good as your turntable because it will be the first thing that is going to amplify the signal coming from your turntable. And that is very important and you hearing the quality that your turntable brings. So I personally picked out the Alnick H7000V as my FOMO stage. And this was a uh, pretty much a no brainer decision to be honest with you because it has all the settings that I need and more. Uh, first of all, it has a beautiful look. It is a tube design. And because I like tube FOMO stages, my experience has always been that uh, tube phono stages just sound better to me, more musical. Don't know why, but I just prefer a tube kind of sound married with a turntable setup. So I went specifically chasing after tube phono stages and I landed on the Alnick H7000V for a few reasons. One of it was that it accepted both MM and MC cartridges. So I can switch to either one if I ever decide to review cartridges separately on this turntable. Um, and another thing is that matching of the phone stage to your cartridge and turntable can be a little bit of a daunting task, especially with phone stages that have limited amount of uh, features. Well, this phone stage was just packed with features and we won't go into all the details of what each of these settings do or features do in this video because this is just a tour. I'll do a separate video where I'll be going more into in depth about what these settings do for my uh, turntable setup and what how you can use it. Uh, but essentially it's one of two things uh, you can you adjust to make sure that you have proper matching to your cartridge and you can also make sure to have the feature set so that it matches to the recording that you are playing at the time, the record you're playing. So we'll go into that a little bit later on, but this phone stage really lets you and allows you to hear the music as intended. And when I say intended, I don't mean like the art artist intended, um, more so there's a lot of settings to make sure that you're hearing what you're supposed to be hearing is all I'm saying. And that kind of settings and features was important for me as a reviewer. And of course the sound signature is just as good as it looks. I mean, it's neutral, but has a little bit of that warmth in the mid range and that, you know, bloom. Now before this, I was actually using a uh, rather inexpensive MoFi phono stage as well as a few other phono stages that was mid tier that I had borrowed for uh, this turntable while I was getting the Alnick uh, phono stage transported to Canada. And one of the phono stages that by accident that came in here for a review that I really enjoyed was the audio note phono stage. I found it to be extremely musical with the phono, you know, phono stage and this turntable setup. A little bit colored for sure. It was definitely not neutral, uh, but I, I just loved that just musical sound. 
And honestly, when the Alnick arrived, I was a little bit um, hesitant to switch out because I doubted that the Alnick would bring something new or better to the table. And to my surprise, it did. I, I mean, there was no going back. The, the overall separation, the soundstage, the imagery within the soundstage that was just more focused, it did definitely bring a little bit more of an analytical nature to the overall sound of the setup, but in a good way. It was more technically advanced, but still retaining that musicality. And more than anything, that mid-range was just pure bliss from the sweetness that it provided in the top band, um, in the female vocals, the nuances that came through the singer's voices from the string scrapes, everything was more nuanced, more detailed, analytically more advanced, but at the same time, it didn't come across bright or fatiguing or harsh or in your face. In fact, it brought out more of that um, holographic sound that I was looking for while also, like I mentioned, uh, enhancing that nuance factor and that analytical kind of drive. So to me, I was like, wow, I appreciate the musicality of the audio note, but for my reference system that I needed to be overall neutral, at the same time musical, I mean, this was a match made in heaven and I just absolutely loved it. Again, one thing that I didn't expect from this final stage that I actually was pleasantly surprised by was that it does have XLR output. It is a fully balanced design, uh, which again, wasn't required. I have my you know, phone stage and turntable fairly close to each other. Using the XLR actually did bring out more improvements, uh, especially in the uh, the quiet nature of this setup. And of course, with a quality turntable like the Alnick H7000V here, I really didn't have any issues in terms of sound. Of course, there's still going to be cracks and pops that's not gonna go away, but those were so quiet and I could hear more into the music, enjoy the music without being disturbed or confused by those cracks and pops. I just found it just relaxing to just sit down and listen to every piece of music. The last thing that I needed from my final stage was that it needed to be very high quality, use high quality materials, of course, but also very durable because again, it's something that I'm planning to have long term without changing it. So I needed to perform and be relevant and uh, punch above his price point and all that kind of stuff and have quality materials that will be still relevant next few years. Something that wasn't gonna break on me, especially because it's a two funnel stage. I needed to be it to be reliable. And when I went to Alnick Audio, actually, I went there in Korea not that long ago. I visited them, made a video. Uh, check that video out in the description below. I was, I was pleasantly surprised by the things they were doing. They were really taking the tube technology and advancing it forward. And that was something that I haven't seen from manufacturers making tube units in a long time. It's something that, you know, we all know tube units are something that's very well understood and it's not much real new innovation going on. And what I saw what at Alnick Audio in person was shocking. They were really taking advancements and definitely watch that video if you wanna learn more about uh, Alnick Audio and what they're doing. But we're, they were really taking careful attention to advancing the tube technology forward and every part is made inside their factory in South Korea. And I was very pleasantly surprised how meticulous they were and how passionate they were in making their um, high-end Alnick audio pieces. So it's a bit of an art form in my opinion, really in terms of quality and the meticulous craftsmanship, something that I truly believe will last generations. So that's why I picked this without hesitation because even though it's a tube unit, it's, it's a tank, it's an absolute tank. And that brings me to the overall goal of the setup. And yes, one of them was that it needed to be neutral, absolutely. Uh, while being musical, but also um, that comes with a price. And the price is that, well, with turntable setups that used to be uh, more vintage, more uh, musical rather than neutral, I should say, right? More mid-range magic, more kind of bloom effect, warmth. That kind of effect is good for especially poor recorded music is what I found. Um, I have both very well recorded music and very poorly recorded music on LP, but I play both, I enjoy both. And, you know, especially with poor recordings, nostalgic, something that, you know, I play often that has been, you know, 
given down to me from generations ago um, and I play them. Now, I don't expect the poor recordings to sound wonderful, but I've also had setups that were really, really ridiculously expensive turntable setups that when I played those records, it just ripped it to shreds. I was unlistenable, showed me all the flaws, and the last thing I want to is hear the flaws of what I know is already poorly recorded. I don't, I'm not in the studio. I want to enjoy these recordings the best I can, not dissect them. So if you're someone that wants to dissect things, there's definitely more analytical setups out there, but this setup was a nice balance. I'm not gonna say that poor recordings sound better on this turntable, but it sounds acceptable while making good recordings sound even better and incredible so that I can hear and enjoy the improvements of those well-recorded music while not ripping to shreds all the poor recordings that I have. I can still enjoy them. They still sound musical to me. It has enough warmth in the system to really bring out um, enjoyment with those poor recordings without dissecting and analytically ripping them apart to unlistenable levels. Now, of course, this is not a full-on review. This is just a tour. So I'll be doing a separate video on the phono stage and the turntable by itself later on. Uh, however, uh, there's one more key part to my analog setup, and that is my reel-to-reel -reel by techniques. Now, this is a vintage unit. Uh, it's something that has been kind of like a collection piece for many people, but I actually play it. This is something that is not just a showpiece. I play it in my system all the time. And this is the RS-1500, uh, really a, a, a famous, not famous, but really a collectible and really something that has been um, a key part in my journey because of the the, the beautiful sound, everything I described here with the turntable setup, I get it with my techniques. But a little bit more smooth, a little bit more organic, refined sound. And you can actually get it in the used market for far less money than a turntable setup like this. Now the big downside is that while the unit itself, uh, you may be able to get it for inexpensive prices, of course, it's an old unit, um, it's quite old, so you need to be able to kind of service it, know people who can service it for you, and it's a little bit, you know, not a daunting task, but something that you have to do, you know, demagnetize and all that kind of stuff to maintain the unit. But aside from that, the biggest downside to a reel-to-reel -reel like this is that each music piece that you play, the reels, are quite expensive, especially depending on different quality. You can get it for as low as $500 or so for not very good, uh, good ones that's you know not from the master tape and then there's the ones that are like master tape or one step that is just atrociously expensive uh, so I have limited amount of flexibility in terms of how many reels I have so the music pieces are limited the selection is limited and it's definitely more pricey when you play the recording I mean it's so worth it those specific recordings I like that I play on my reel to reel it's a match and I love it. It's like heaven, it's the whole graphic nature, the smoothness, the refinement is just next level. Now, I did a full video on the reel to reel if you're more interested in kind of learning about it because of course it is an old technology and it's not something that is well known, but it's something that I personally enjoy a lot and it does sound wonderful. So that's pretty much it. I hope this video was fun, helpful, entertaining to watch nice show and tell. So if you liked it, then make sure to click that like button on this video as it helps me greatly um, and it doesn't cost you anything. And I hope to see you in my next video, my next audio journey. And let me know if you want to learn more about some of the references like speaker references or amplifier references that I have going on. Today was just about my analog setup because like I said, it's gonna be here for a while, for a very long time. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Until next time.